This is the BP oil spill from 2010. Petroleum is flowing out into the ocean until it can be sealed. But even after it's closed, the contamination won't stop flowing. This is the story of fashion, petroleum, and us. At the heart of this story, we find plastic. Our oceans are contaminated with the plastics we have been using since the 50s. Like polyethylene, PET, PVC, and styrofoam. They make bags, bottles, packaging, nets, and everything we need very cheaply. But the problem is that they don't degrade. They just break down into smaller and smaller pieces called micro and nanoplastics, eventually finding their way into animal life. Microplastics were even recently discovered in human blood in March of 2022 by Professor Vithak. We asked him what type of plastic is getting into our blood. Well, the, the interesting thing is, you know, if you, if you talk about clothes, you're looking at these plastic particles. And one of the more predominant plastic particle types are fibers. Plastic fibers, a.k.a. polyester. According to the Textile Exchange, 52% of all textiles produced are made of polyester. But what is polyester made from? Uh, hydrocarbons. Uh, hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons. Uh, and we must end our dependency on all Russian hydrocarbons. I don't think we can turn our backs entirely on hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons. Polyesters are hydrocarbons, also known as petroleum or natural gas. The same petroleum that is causing conflicts all over the world and creating oil spills and excessive CO2 emissions is also what we are wearing on our skin. How does this transformation happen? Are we really wearing petroleum? First, hydrocarbons are pumped from the earth and then transported through pipelines to petroleum refineries to be separated by heat. Petroleum has many uses, primarily fuel, but the petroleum fraction we need is called naphtha. After refining naphtha, we get two lighter hydrocarbons, ethylene and xylene. Once we have these two hydrocarbons, we move on to the chemical processing stage. Here we'll convert xylene into dimethyl terephthalate and ethylene into monoethylene glycol. These are the two hydrocarbon chemicals we need to make plastic. By polymerizing monoethylene glycol and terephthalic acid, we make polyethylene terephthalate. PET is one of the most common plastics made. PET is polyester. They are the same thing. The PET chips now only need to be melted to make plastic bottles or polyester fibers. They are the exact same type of plastic made directly from petroleum. This is why recycled PET bottles can be melted to make polyester fibers. So how does PET become our clothes? Once the PET is melted, it is extruded through a spinneret and simply pulled into long, thin fibers. Often, many petrochemicals are added here to make the polyester functional. Once these filament fibers are cut, we have made the polyester staple fiber. These are the plastic fibers we are finding in our bodies and the environment. At this point, polyester can be mixed with other fibers like cotton, wool, and viscose. First, the polyester fibers are carded and combed into slivers. These slivers are pooled and pooled into thinner slivers and finally spun into cones of yarn. The second step is turning the polyester yarn into fabric. For shirts, the yarn is knitted in circular machines. Once done knitting, these raw polyester fabrics are washed, dyed with petroleum-based dyes, and treated with petrochemical finishings to be made into clothes. The finished fabric is cut into pieces. These pieces are sewn by seamsters, usually using polyester or nylon threads and labels. Once finished, the plastic clothes are packaged in plastic to be sent to you. The polyester and fabric threads and labels of your clothes are constantly releasing microplastics when made into clothes, when worn, when washed, and when thrown away. Maybe even more fibers are released from your clothes during, um, during use of your clothes. 
These microplastics, made directly from petroleum, end up back into our rivers and oceans, into wildlife and our food, and into our lungs and bloodstream. Regardless if it's virgin or recycled polyester, or if the plastic is transformed into new products, it will constantly release microplastics. Maybe a little bit of, you know, what they call greenwashing or whatever, you know, but it's not a solution at all. You go to the ocean cleanup and you take all these rubbish, you know, from, from the Pacific Ocean and you try to make uh, glasses or whatever, sunglasses or whatever you have from it, you know. It's good for the awareness raising, you know, that people understand there's a problem, but it doesn't solve, it's not efficient recycling. Even if polyester is recycled, it will always end up back in the ocean, in animals and in us. Actually, the most numerous items are now the very, very small particles, the microplastic pieces, down to pieces less than the diameter of a human hair, pieces that have arisen from the fragmentation of large items, the crisp packets and the bottles, but also from the direct release of small particles, such as the fibers from clothing. The only way to stop this contamination is to stop using plastics. Hi, I'm Ellie from Aya Eco Fashion. In 2021, we set up our studio in Lima, Peru to take sustainability into our own hands. We make biodegradable plastic-free clothes from the highest quality Pima cotton and alpaca wool. Plastic-free shirts, shorts, sports bras, and underwear, all made from cotton threads, labels, and bands. Every detail matters to us. We source the fiber, knit the yarn, make all of the clothes at single origin in Peru, and send them directly to you from our U.S. and European distribution centers. If you would like more information about sustainable clothes, check us out at ecoaya.com. And if you're in Europe, check us out at ecoaya.eu.